We made it to the final closing session. I am honored to introduce our closing speakers, Dr. Hendry Tan and Dr. Kupiri Ackerman Barger. Hendry Tan serves as the Associate Vice Chancellor for Health Equity, Diversion and in Diver <laughs> Diversity and Inclusion, the Associate Dean for Faculty Development and Diversity, and the Clinical Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the UC Davis School of Medicine. He also serves as the Director of Education at the UC Davis Center for Reducing Health Disparities where he authored a training program to teach healthcare leaders how to make culturally and linguistically appropriate system changes at health organizations. He is also the founding medical director of the Transcultural Wellness Center of Asian Pacific Community Counseling, a community clinic that specializes in serving the mental health needs of Sacramento's diverse Asian and Pacific Islander communities. Kupiri Akmin Barger is Associate Dean for Health Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, and the Associate Clinical Professor at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis. She is also the Director of Faculty Development for Education and Teaching, Co-Director for the Interprofessional Teaching Scholars Program, and serves as a researcher for the Center for a Diverse, Work diverse Healthcare Workforce at UC Davis Health. Over her career, Dr. Peary has combined her expertise in nursing and education to advance inclusive learning environments, education equity, and workforce diversity. She is one of four national diversity consultants for the Campaign for Action, where she serves state action coalitions across the country, establishing programs, creating policies to advance health equity, to drive and sustain a culture of health. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Hendry Tan and Dr. Piri Ackerman Barger. Thank you so much for that um, wonderful introduction. And um, I'm really excited to have this opportunity to share some uh, uh, reflections and, and thoughts um, in collaboration with my partner, um, Dr. Uh, Piri, who is um, an incredible, incredible leader here at our uh, health system and our School of Nursing. You know, what, what I have really uh, come to appreciate over the years um, in my work as a, <coughs> excuse me, as a um, healthcare provider is um, the important role that we have as health professionals to really make sure that our, our patients and their families uh, get the best care and uh, culturally equitable, health equitable care um, possible in our health systems. But as you can see um, with Dr. Uh, uh, Chaco's uh, talk and other talks in this um, conference, that uh, there is really this opportunity, and I would say more than an opportunity, this responsibility for we in the health professions to, uh, to think beyond the um, the clinical setting, think beyond the walls of our hospitals and clinics into the community. And for far too long, um, I think that uh, the health professions as, um, as a whole has sort of considered um, what happens outside the walls of our um, clinics and, and hospitals as out of our lane, when in fact it is very much within our lane, as is shown by the um, the studies on social determinants of health. And I know that uh, Dr. Shimon uh, uh, spoke a lot about that in regards to mental health as well. But when we think about the, um, the context of the community and health equity for our communities and our society, we really have to um, think about it in terms of community partnerships. We all here, um, if we're part of the um, health profession system, we, we're socialized to think about um, problems of the community in, um, in a particular health uh, defined uh, uh, perspective. And that perspective is, um, is not necessarily a perspective that uh, encompasses all of what needs to be understood about health equity, social justice, and anti-racist work. Um, so I think the first step in um, really putting, in, putting into bear action 
that is anti-racist and um, uh, health equitable and social uh, justice oriented is um, to uh, foster meaningful partnerships with, uh, with our communities, with our neighbors. And when, we, when, when I first um, uh, came into this work and thought about community engagement, I thought about it as um, outreach. You know, we as uh, healthcare professionals have a lot that we've studied. We go out and um, have informational booths um, and uh, share with the, the uh, community and the public about our knowledge of, um, of health and uh, illness. And there is a role for that. I think that there is an important role for that, but um, it's really important for us to understand that that's actually a very incomplete picture of the kinds of partnerships and relationships that we uh, can and need to develop with our community partners in the long uh, term. I think a big lesson that I uh, learned over, uh, over the years of being a, a healthcare provider is um, the work that we were doing at the Transcultural Wellness Center. This was an effort, as I had mentioned earlier, where um, community members, um, Southeast Asian uh, uh, community members who uh, recognized um, in, uh, in their lives the importance and the lack of uh, meaningful health care and mental health care in uh, the community. They uh, collaborated with a, uh, a community-based organization that had been in uh, the community for uh, several decades, the Asian Pacific Community Counseling, uh, working with uh, Sac State and with us at UC Davis to develop a clinic that was really from the ground up defined by what the community said uh, mattered. So they turned um, at that time um, our ideas about mental health upside down um, and it, uh, actually in many ways right side up again. Um, uh, the importance of family the importance of, of, uh, of food, the importance of um, uh, belonging, the importance of being able to um, work the earth for uh, many of our, uh, our, our patients and, and communities. Things that in a, in, a, um, in a health context, we don't think about, we think more about you know, things that we can do physically, things that we can do medically, um, and just starting to um, get into the, the work of social um, um, enrichment, uh, so I think that that's the uh, first and most important thing about um, a call to action is, um, is um, fostering collaborative, mutually beneficial, and uh, relationships that really honor community wisdom. The second thing that I think is really important is, um, as Ernestine uh, mentioned, there are uh, deep uh, level issues that uh, go beyond just um, a person's uh, ethnicity per se, or their medical condition, but really um, uh, uh, for us to really understand um, the roots of inequities, we have to go back in history. And she gave a, a really important lesson for us about um, the history of Native Americans and how that impacts um, health today. To understand the history enables us to understand um, how to address the policies that uh, were put in place in, in the, the historical uh, context. So I think that that is uh, really important. One of the things that I mentioned earlier was um, this idea of an anchor institution that, um, that we as healthcare uh, systems, as uh, public education systems, as um, city and county and regional and state uh, and federal governments have this role in doing more than just um, health or, or um, uh, or uh, education, that's very important, but we are also economic entities that can really shift the, um, the flow of funds and resources into the community as well as shift um, policies and put weight on, um, on uh, policies that need to be enacted within um, our uh, community settings. So at UC Davis, we've, um, we've recently um, embarked on a journey called um, Aim for Community Health or Anchor Institution uh, Mission for Community Health. And um, uh, much as uh, what uh, Council uh, Member Chenier talked about, it's really investing in four major areas. One aspect is to invest in our people, in workforce. So UC Davis employs over uh, 20,000 people. If we think about um, the, uh, the potential for us to 
uh, to employ uh, uh, people within our communities. Um, jobs can lead to economic stability. It can lead to um, health care as well as people get insurance. And it can lead to sociopolitical power as well. And so um, as institutions that hire, thinking beyond just our health care mission to our health equity mission, it's really important for us to think about um, hiring. Right now, um, UC Davis, uh, we hire about six and a half percent of our uh, workforces from our uh, local communities in Oak Park and South Sacramento. So we have a lot of work that we uh, need to do to improve um, that, especially as we start to expand um, our services and as Aggie Square uh, gets built, what we want to really avoid is displacement, that uh, we bring people into our communities, uh, increasing rent, increasing um, taxes, and um, displace uh, the original uh, members of our communities. That is gentrification and that is toxic for the community. And it's really important that, uh, that at UC Davis and our collaborators, that we really own up to um, the, uh, the damage that we cause when we uh, build and expand and really um, put in place some, um, some, uh, some restitution in that area and scrutinize our practices. So uh, we need to improve um, our ability to, um, to uh, develop our local workforce. And I know uh, Dr. Fancher and Henderson um, uh, 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 and others in uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Peary as well in the School of Nursing are working to improve the uh, pathway to health professions. And we need to think about that uh, more broadly, not just the health professions. UC Davis employs a lot of people a lot of people beyond just those who um, work in the health professions. And I say this not to um, diminish the work of health professionals, but I'm saying this to uplift the work of um, our e economic people, our finance people, our food services people. Everybody has a role in uh, improving health equity and, and UC Davis has a role in expanding that. The other thing is to invest in our uh, community by um, the contracts um, that we have with our local businesses. Um, right now, 8% um, of, uh, our, of our businesses are, um, are done in, um, in what we call socially and economically responsible um, uh, 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 businesses. We need to improve upon that. Um, the, the thing is, if we invest our economic energy into our local community and spend our dollars that we get and funnel that to uh, local businesses, to uh, local women, minority owned businesses, that's good for us and that's good for the community. And that's good for health. Because what that means is that every dollar that we spend and, and the econo economists at Berkeley have studied this, every dollar we spend um, and we put into our local community actually um, gets gets transferred to from one community member to another to another and so that wealth is shared to the degree that um, every dollar that is spent there's a return of a dollar 25 to a dollar 40. so not only is it um, morally the right thing to do socially the right thing to do it's also economically the smart thing to do as well and so um, investing in our local community is one of the most important things that we as a healthcare system can do beyond um, providing equitable care directly for our communities and providing better access to care for our communities. It's looking at ourselves not just as a healthcare institution, but as a community um, partner um, within our uh, uh, economic, our social, and our political uh, environment. So one of the um, final things that I'll say and then turn it over to um, Dr. Peary is that we need to also think about um, the, um, the knowledge that we have as um, health, uh, health uh, uh, professionals and as a health system. And we need to leverage that voice in um, the, the public uh, consciousness. Um, so racism is an important example of um, a social uh, 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 dynamic, a toxic social dynamic that has direct impact on the health care and health, uh, health status of our uh, folks. That is really important for us to get the message across. 
uh, to, um, to the public. Now, it's complicated because we're a public uh, institution, and uh, this may be with other public institutions, in terms of uh, being um, nonpartisan in our messaging. But I, I, um, I think it's very important for us to uh, say that health is not, is not a, a, uh, a partisan issue. Health is a nonpartisan issue, and that's where we, as a health system, um, uh, weigh in, and it is in our lane. And so at um, UC Davis, we've been making a lot of shifts in how we think about our presence in the community to be more visible, to be more upfront, to put our, the weight of our, um, our commitment to health into helping the public to understand what contributes to good health and what contributes to health inequities. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to my uh, uh, beloved colleague, uh, Dr. Peary. Thank you, Dr. Tan. Uh, really appreciate your words. Um, I want to thank everybody for this conference. This conference is all about health equity. This is the, the idea of where we want to go, um, but we know that we're not there. And so we're all about what are the actions that we need to do to get to this thing called health equity. Um, and so that's been somewhat the theme of what we're talking about. And our speakers have had some amazing insights. Um, one is I wanna point out um, the, the notion of anti-racism is all about moving from this place of accepting the status quo, of being passive and saying, you know, I'm not, I didn't create this, I would never treat my patients in this way, what do I have to do with the problem? into understanding that doing, the, doing things the way that we have done them in the past um, hasn't changed our outcomes. They've been very consistent over time. So we need to be active in what we're doing. What does that look like at the individual level? Um, Dr. Chaco earlier, she was asked, what should we do? And she said something very tangible, which was talk about the Native American communities. And this is a community uh, of peoples that are often underheard and undernoticed, and it comes down to a numbers issue. There are so few Native Americans um, that it, it's hard to find speakers, it's hard to find representation, and because of that, um, their voices are often not heard. I don't know about you, but when I heard her speaking this morning, I was like, I thought that I was fairly knowledgeable. You know, I was the director of nurses for uh, United, United Indian Health Services. I've done talks and my mind was blown by some of the stuff that she was saying. So it's this notion that we need to continually um, become more and more informed about groups of people that are different from us and understand that that information is not coming to us um, naturally through the pipeline. We didn't learn that in U.S. history. That's not a topic that's talked about a lot. Um, and so making sure that we're informed and that we are using our um, positions of privilege being in academic healthcare institutions to make sure that voices are heard. Um, another person that made this plea is a woman named Janet Mock, who was here a few years ago. Um, she is a mixed race trans woman who said, I get tired sometimes being one of the few people that's always teaching about the experiences of the trans community. Could more people please step up and talk about the disparities that are experienced in the trans community? So these are examples of um, allyship. Um, I'm just looking at some other uh, notes that I took. Um, acknowledging that we have biases and, um, you know, Ruth Shim in her session earlier quoted James Baldwin, who was talking about, we need to let go of our guilt and this, you know, uh, trying to assign blame and recognize that that's not moving the conversation. Those aren't moving the issues forward. We need to be active in doing the things with the reality that we have now of moving forward. And so for students, I wanna say, um, you know, in the classes that I teach health equity and social determinants of health, people are often saying, what, what, are we, what do we do? What are we supposed to do? And you have come to a world-class university and are getting a world-class education. 
And what we would like you to do is see yourself as central in writing the policy. Um, you know, I've asked students like, what, should, what do you think we should do? Well, we should call a politician and tell them to do something about it. And I would ask you to take it a step further that you can actually begin to write the recommendations, write the policy that is given to the politicians who can then put that forward. And seeing yourself as central, as having the knowledge, we're teaching you about evidence-based practice. Um, we also do evidence-based policy. And so stretching that muscle and seeing yourself as the person that might be writing that policy, we need you for that. Um, for writing grants, for creating those partnerships. Um, and then the other thing is, again, we are not there. We haven't done it yet. So we need to do things differently than we've done them. And so we need to be innovative. And sometimes that means taking chances. That means piloting programs and role modeling what is possible. But we need the, the minds of diverse folks, folks that represent many, many different communities to think about the health care problems that we have in different ways. And I'm going to stop there because I know that I'm the person that's between you and lunch and the rest of your day. Um, Dr. Tan and I are happy to facilitate a discussion. If you need to go, we totally recognize that. Um, but this is time for uh, open forum. Let's have just a little round of applause for both Dr. Tan and Dr. Piri. We'll be taking some questions um, for about 15 minutes. So we've got some time. I, you know, I did see that there was a question about um, uh, minority owned businesses in the area. And um, I just wanted to address that. So, um, so my office is uh, developing a uh, list of uh, uh, vendors uh, that UC Davis can use in the, um, in the local area. And we're going to um, uh, uh, disseminate that list on our website. The interesting thing is that at UC Davis, you have to sort of uh, be a vendor in order to be able to, um, for, for departments and, and the, the university to be able to um, contract with you. And so we're working uh, with uh, uh, vendors within the uh, local community to help them to um, navigate the pathway to becoming a vendor and then, um, and then uh, getting on our list. The, the other thing that we're doing as well is um, we've looked into art and signage because um, you know, there's some, there's, uh, when, you're, when you're walking into a clinic or walking into a, a waiting room, the first thing you see is, um, for, for many of us, like myself, um, you don't see people that's uh, represented, um, that represents your community and you wonder if um, they're gonna actually understand um, where you're coming from. And so one of the things that, that we're doing is we have uh, looked at how the, the process by which our um, UC Davis um, gets its artwork who does it contract to? And so we're developing some policies and then, um, and then bringing in um, uh, artists and developing a, a list of artists who uh, more uh, represent um, our diverse community here um, in Sacramento and, and our, our patient population as well. So it's, it's not only a, um, again, this is one of the examples of uh, partnerships, not just benefit, it's, it's mutually beneficial. It benefits us because um, we want to provide the best care possible, and it also benefits um, our, our local artists, for example. So be on the lookout for that, um, that uh, list of businesses on our website. Thank you, Dr. Tan. Uh, this question is for Dr. Piri from Marissa. When will we know that we are ready and knowledgeable enough to help write policy and get more involved? I feel like I have so much to learn, and that is a mental barrier. Yeah, I hear you. I, I'm always amazed when people are, are asking me that question. I'm like, why are you asking me? I'm not ready either. I'm not the expert either. Um, and so recognizing that now you have a lot more knowledge than a lot of people do. Um, I also think that it's going to take practice. Like you're going to stick your feet in, in the waters a little bit, test it out, realize that you're making impact and go to the next step. Um, I, I just want to talk about um, Aaron King today, 
who I think this was one of the first times that he presented on microaggressions and did a really great job. I don't think he sees himself as, as an expert on that, um, but he is becoming an expert. And one of the things is to um, do the research, to do the, the talks, to become informed. And one of the things that I like to do is try to keep the information um, somewhat uh, simple for people. Like I, I think that as academics, we tend to make things more complicated than they need to be. Um, and so realizing that you don't have to use a, a lot of jargon to get your points across and to bring people into your cause. Um, and I would say that um, the other thing is recognizing that you're probably having a little bit of imposter syndrome um, and that imposter syndrome is one of the symptoms that highly capable and highly talented people have. And one of the ways to overcome that is to metabolize the external feedback that you're getting. Metabolize where you are right now. You are at UC Davis. Um, you are in a prestigious program. You're getting the information and you are probably the right person at the right time to be having conversations about the things that you're passionate about. And so I'm sp speaking to you specifically, but also hopefully that's applicable to um, everybody in the room that is having that same question. When do I do it? I would say start now. That's so intimidating, Dr. Peary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, this one is for Dr. Tan from Ian Kim. The concept of UC Davis Health being an anchor institution in Sacramento is so powerful. What can we do to support this idea in growing and coming to life? Uh, thank you for that. So I think that there are, there are several things, um, a, a number of things. We're, we're all we can all contribute uh, to this. So there are things that we can do as uh, individuals and, um, and Dr. Piri uh, spoke about some of that. Um, I think it's, it's, um, it's really important that, um, that UC Davis uh, do a good job um, and do better actually in developing uh, uh, meaningful and lasting community relationships. So, um, so I, I think that, you know, as, as I look back on my um, years at UC Davis, I think we have not been as, um, as, um, as uh, uh, we have not stepped up um, as uh, community partners as we should. And this is the opportunity. So, um, so the work that each of you are doing around um, partnering with the community, keep that up expand upon that. Think about it from the standpoint of this larger um, uh, effort that we're um, focusing around Anchor Institution. Um, part, part of, uh, I think, what we struggle with in terms of um, uh, uh, Anchor Institution is that there are, there, there are a lot of pockets of work that we're each doing around community engagement and uh, coming together and, um, and, and collaborating with one another as well as with the, uh, uh, the larger uh, university, I think is uh, the large community, I think is really important. The other thing that I think is, is really, um, can be really helpful is um, push. You know, um, uh, push me, push our leadership, um, come up with, uh, with the ideas. You know, um, our, our institution is, um, is grounded in its own history. And that history um, uh, prevents us from looking at, uh, at things the way we should sometimes. And uh, so, um, so for those students, uh, those of you who are students, um, you're, you're part, of, part of your world is still in the community as much as it is at our uh, health system and school. So help us to uh, see what um, we're, we're not seeing. And those of us who are, those of you who are, um, who are not part of UC Davis, push your uh, government, push your local businesses, be engaged um, in the, the discussions around um, policy and, um, and practices within the community. Um, those of you who, who are uh, health professionals, 
attend um, attend community meetings, lend voice. I've I've uh, I've shared oftentimes that um, that as health professionals, we have an opportunity to really amplify the uh, the voices of community members because um, because our voices are generally um, uh, more uh, more heard in professional settings because uh, of our commitment towards health uh, care. And so use that voice to amplify. Um, think about ways in which communities can benefit from what we have uh, to offer and also give us feedback on the ways in which we're not doing a good job. So I have heard from community members as well as um, from our staff that it is a bear to try to navigate through the application process to become an employee here at UC Davis. And this is not just at UC Davis, but at other university settings as well. Um, we need to change that. We need to change, and, and there are some things that we can change. Some things are dictated by uh, UC broadly. Um, and so we need to also, um, and, and Dr. Henderson says, and be a patient here as well. Yes, taking on those, um, those perspectives, um, uh, amplifying those perspectives so that we can um, figure ways to address these kinds of barriers. So we might be running out of time. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Thank you, Dr. Tan and Dr. Piri. Can we have a final unmute yourself, a woot woot for both of them. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much to all of our speakers, um, our closing speakers, everyone who has stuck it out to the end. We hope you had a wonderful time. Uh, we pulled two names for our raffle prizes uh, during the conference. So the winner of the Hydro Flask and gift card is Sarah Bala. Woo woo! And the winner <laughs> of the essential oil diffuser is Shayeste Moini. Woo -woo! So the winners, you'll be contacted by email and we'll mail your, uh, we'll mail your prizes. I'd like to take a moment to celebrate my awesome colleagues. Here's everyone, the incredible team of students that have put together, uh, Put together today's conference. We learned a lot and we hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from our speakers as well. Any current UC Davis nursing or medical or PA students interested in joining the check committee next year, please look out for some announcements from us later on. We'd like to give special thanks to our sponsors, Clinica Tepati, the UC Davis School of Medicine, Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, as well as the UC Davis Health Marketing Team, and Daryl and Stryley for helping us put this conference together. We really couldn't have done this without you. And finally, thank you to all the participants and speakers for being here. We're so happy to have a wonderful turnout today and we're super grateful for all the support our speakers have received and our team has received. All of your sweet messages in the chat have really pushed us through. This has been such a great learning experience for us and we hope to continue this important conversation afterwards. We'll email you a feedback survey later and as this is our very first virtual conference, we'd really appreciate your feedback and input. If you have any questions, feel free to email us, follow check on our social media pages. Thank you again, be safe, have a great lunch, and we hope to see you next year.